whip one today. So if you're anything like me, you probably had a guitar teacher who was very keen on you playing everything with four fingers, all lined up nice with the fingertips. You'll probably notice that my own personal technique is not quite that. I don't really like looking at my left hand, but there are jazz guitar players out there with a very legit or classical left hand, such as Lage Lund and obviously Pasquale Grasso, Adam Rogers. Um, Jim Hall had a, had a very classical left hand. Um, but there is another way of doing it, and if you haven't given us a go, I'd advise giving it a try, and that's quite simply rock and roll, grab and whack, like this, mostly using three fingers. Now, I think a lot of people get it into their heads that jazz is a very complicated form of music with lots and lots of notes, and therefore we couldn't possibly use something as simple as, you know, the old <laughs> blues rock position. But actually, if you watch enough videos of classic jazz guitarists, you're going to see that quite a lot of them did exactly that and continue to do so. So, for instance, people like uh, Wes Montgomery, Grant Green, Charlie Christian... And uh, more recently, um, Pat Metheny, Peter Bernstein, even Kurt Rosenwinkel moves a little bit in this direction. Uh, and it's um, uh, different from perhaps the more kind of square on classical position where you've got all your fingers lined up like that. Okay, you know, um, uh, like a school guitar player basically, to where we have the thumb kind of here. And the hand is not straight, it's kind of pronated. So if you look, you'll notice that my hand is almost kind of 45 degree angle, maybe more, away from the guitar neck. So that means I can stretch out my third finger, which makes things like, you know, obviously the blue scale. Really, really playable. And my thumb's kind of over here. So it's not it's not like this. It's not opposite my fingers. That wouldn't really be very helpful. But it's actually kind of further back. And that obviously also allows you on a guitar which wasn't strung with ridiculous flat round strings would allow you to bend them and uh, do all the rocky, bluesy stuff that we love. Um, however, in jazz, you can still use a vibrato, just a bit of a slower one. Great uh, British guitar players to use this technique um, include um, Dave Cliff and uh, the wonderful Mr. Jim Mullen, for instance. Um, so um, I think if you haven't played around with this, it, it's quite fun. I mean, it's not the way I normally play, so you'll have to forgive any clams and mistakes, but I think already, you know, just by doing it, and I did it the other day because I was playing in the cold and my little finger wouldn't work, basically. So I found myself playing more in this way again. And again, I was like, oh yeah, this is really, this is really fun playing like this. So... I mean, that's a lot of movement, but actually, um, movement this way is not as much a big deal, I think, as people say. Uh, Julian Large made that point in a masterclass. People think this is a big move from the third fret up to the twelfth fret. But really, you're not moving your hand very much. It's not a big deal. The problem is people get locked into positions, and I think the three-fingered approach is a great way to get out of positions. For example, I'll play you a little G minor 13 arpeggio. This is a kind of a West shape. And it gets you from the fifth fret up to the twelfth. Now, if you're playing out of position, you lose a third. If you're playing, if you're playing like three notes of string or something, I know people, some people like that. You still wouldn't get as much sort of um, as much kind of span, um, and that's really uh, nice. I mean, I love all these sort of diagonal positions. Even if you play the blues scale, you know. encourages to slide around and play much more vocally. So I think one thing you lose is a little bit of that kind of real um, sort of evenness and kind of uh, precision that you can get with four fingers. Um, you do get a slightly funkier sort of more groove oriented kind of thing. But then like, I kind of like that. That's the thing. Um, I'm a bit torn really. You know, there's part of me that loves that kind of cool contemporary sound. And there's part of me that loves that old school kind of, you know, very, very swinging kind of funky sound. Um, maybe you can't have both, but, um, you know, um, I think this is a this is a cool way to play. Although, as I say, Kurt Rosenwinkel kind of uses a pronated hand and he uses a little finger bit as well, but, you know, he's hammering on and pulling off, so that's the way he articulates. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, it doesn't play that, but I mean... You know obviously do that with your thumb over the top as well and you can use perhaps more three fingered positions I think that's what Kurt does a little bit actually watching his hand um, 
Um, but, you know, this is mostly, I think, in the realm of the kind of more traditional players. Um, and uh, it's great. I think it's a really good way to play. Um, you should give it a go if you haven't, um, haven't tried it. Um, ways I would work on it, obviously I'd work on scales. No, uh, obviously, you know, patterns. Probably get used to the toing and throwing a little bit as your hand moves backwards and forwards. And that's part of the part of the deal. And then, you know, arpeggios. And this relates to the um, bigger issue of like, you know, actually, um, how, whatever kind of hand position you use, you should never be stretching, okay, to play single note lines. You, obviously, you might need to stretch to play chords, things like that, you know. But actually, when you're playing, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, when you're playing single note lines, you should actually not be stretching because there's no need to. For instance, if I can play an arpeggio, almost all in close hand position, right? Um, just by moving around, um, you know. So the thing is not to get you know stuck. Whether you play with your thumb over the top or not, is not to get stuck in in a position. And to let your hand be you know in a natural hand shape. Um, if you start doing stuff like this, if you're not careful, that can be a problem. Um, if you are going to do it, keep your wrist straight. But obviously, with with like moving. Get up there, or I can refinger it to lessen the stretch. If I, you know, if that's too, if that takes too much time. Um, so I think that's a generally a good principle to be honest. Um, and I think keeping your hand mobile is um, is great. Um, just a quick variation on this. Uh, Lage Lund is a very, uh, you know, very proper left hand player. You know, but he still plays arpeggios mostly with three fingers because, as far as apparently. He doesn't think that you should use your little finger unless you're changing direction. And I can kind of see where he's coming from. There's something very mobile about three fingers. It kind of gets you around. Whereas you're playing with four fingers, so it gets to the fourth finger, you can't really go anywhere. It's like, oh, it's a strange thing. But yeah, you kind of change direction as soon as you use your little finger. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, I would say um, maybe... maybe the thumb over the top pronated hand thing might not suit all hand sizes. Um, but if you haven't tried it, give it a go and see what you think. I think it's fun. Thanks for watching.